Okay, I guess we got everyone here in the room here. Uh, my name is Sean Rawl. I am the Suicide Prevention Program Manager for the Alaska Army National Guard. Who here has been through one of my briefings before? Ooh, ooh, look at all the wonderful hands. Okay, I am a retired military uh, service member. I did 24 years total service, 22 and a half active, both regular Army and in the National Guard. I am proud of the National Guard, I'm proud of each and every one of you, and it is a great pleasure to be standing up in front of each and every one of you. You guys are all heroes, and you need to make sure that you guys are acting that way. As you can see within these classes here, there's a common theme, stressors, uh, substance abuse, suicide prevention, resiliency, they all tie hand in hand. So make sure you're listening, take the information out of this, um, and let's get going on this. Who here had ACE training throughout the, this year? A lot of you, okay, a lot of you. Okay, everyone knows that ACE, Ask, Care, Escort. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through some training here. Uh, it may be redundant for some of you, but we learn by repetition, so uh, this is good information. Next slide, please. Okay, be aware what is in your rock. What does that mean to someone out there? Anyone, come on. What's it? Your closet. What's going on in your life? Things like that. Who? Who? Okay. Remember, I always like doing that. You get don't fight the hua. Let it come naturally. So, as we go through this, and I throw out a hua, I don't want a half hua hua. I want a whole full hua. So you guys, you guys are soldiers. Come on, you guys are getting ready to go on deployment. You should be motivated. Gosh. Okay. Where's the, who said that? <laughs> okay. So we got a risk factors. Everyone in life carries risk factors. With them. Okay, uh, there's not one person in this room who doesn't have something going on in their life or risk factors. As you saw in the last presentation with uh, substance abuse, some things that are stressors in your life, you can call them stressors, you can call them risk factors, whatever you want to call them on there. Things like failed relationships, as you can clearly see up here. Family history of suicide, that's very important. If you do should have something like that, make sure you're aware of that so you take the necessary precautionary steps in life. Uh, poor social skills, mood disorders, drug and alcohol abuse, that ties in with the last class, as you can see, they all tie together. Uh, financial stress, legal, some people, legal is very stressful, that's a risk factor in your life. Uh, and there's all different types of risk factors in life. So when it says, be aware what is in your rock, don't just suck it up. What that means is basically, you have risk factors and you have protective factors out there, as you can clearly see on the right-hand side. These protective factors are great. I always like telling stories. I've had experience, whether it be pre-military, during the military, and after the military in regards to suicide. Um, I walked in on an attempted suicide before. I've dealt with it even prior to the, joining the military. So. This is a, a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I never want to see a soldier ever see a soldier hurt, or let alone attempt to take their life or, God forbid, take their life. So please take the information I say here seriously and use those protective factors out there. Okay, I know in my particular case, I was going through, I had several of these risk factors going on at one given time. I was an E8 at the time. So it doesn't just apply to the younger generation out there, the 18 to 25 year old high risk category, they say. It applies to everybody out there. I was going through a divorce. I was going through, how am I gonna keep my house? Uh, I had my kids, it was me and my kids just on our own. I was pending retirement. So I had a lot of risk factors going on in life. And the way I dealt with it, is going back to the last class, I would go home and I would sit there and I would just vegetate. I'd come home at the end of the day like, oh my God, I gotta find a job, I gotta refinance my house, I gotta get everything ready, I got my kids still in high school, so I got all these things going on. But thank God I had a good protective factor out there. Uh, my protective factor happened to be a buddy of mine who pulled me aside because I was always prideful. I'm a soldier, I don't show weakness. I come in, I do what I gotta do, and I go home. You know, I never let people know my personal business because it's my personal business. 
However, thank God something pulled me aside and said, hey, you know what? Sorrow, you're just not the same anymore. You are just snapping all the time. You lost your patience. You know, uh, anyone who's served with me before knows that I was very tolerant and patient in that, but I started to lose that because I'm going through so many stressors in life, so many risk factors going on at one given time. So make sure you're aware of those types of things. And I, my protective factor happened to be a friend of mine. And then I just unloaded. I said, oh my gosh, you'll never believe what all I'm going through right now. And they were like, oh my God, we would have never thought that. Never thought that. So be aware. And that's why I always like to emphasize, especially to you younger E4 Mafia types out there, you know, you guys are your best protective factor out there. You know each other, you're friends, you talk to each other. You guys are probably texting each other on your phones. So make sure, and I know everyone always says, show, uh, Mr. Roll, pull out your phone. Okay, whatever. I'm going to pull out my phone. You guys are old school. I mean, I'm old school. You guys got your iPhone, I got my eyesore. So I make sure that, guys, if you guys are talking to each other on social media, that's a huge thing. Keep the communication going so that you know, realize when somebody is struggling in life. And you're going to know it. And even just going to drill and seeing someone's down on their dumps, ask them a question. Hey, what's going on? How's it going? We'll get to that after though. Next slide. One more thing though. What's another protective factor out there? Someone name another protective factor out there. I had a friend. What's another one? Being active. Being active. Physical fitness. How about church? That was up there, wasn't it? God. So some people were very religious and church is huge for them. So reach out to those types of protective factors out there. Warning signs. Warning signs are an immediate cry for help. So if you see any of these things, you need to make sure that you address it immediately because that's a cry for help right there. And especially this one, I always said, like with my phone, and you see you kids on your phone, disturbing texts, post messages, and emails, that's huge. If you see something like that, somebody may be posting something like, you know, giving their things away, trying to, you know, angry, reach out to them, talk to them, get them to the person, get them to somebody, what would be a good resource to take them to? Me. I would be a good resource to take them to. How about a chaplain? Would a chaplain be a good one? Okay. I'm going to have to throw out a hua because everyone's being real quiet now. Hua? Hua! There you go. What about the chain of command? Commander? First sergeant? There's a plethora. There you go. <laughs> First sergeant commander out there. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of resources out there, and I want to cover that too at the end of it. You're, we got a lot of soldier care assets out there. We care about each and every one of you. Like Renee said in the last briefing, we are not here to help uh, hurt you at all. We are a resource to help you. So if you ever find yourself struggling or needing help, because we all go through hard times in life, everybody does, but reaching out, you need to make sure you reach out to somebody. Because we are we are your family. We are one family, one team, one fight. Oh, oh. there you go. Get a little better on that. But you see these types of things: relationship issues, financial, legal problems, uh, withdrawal from friends and family. That was me. I just go sit at home. I watched every Hulu episode of every TV show out there, and I just crack beers and sit there and think, "Oh my God, how am I going to get through this?" But thank God, had an epiphany. Somebody talked to me, and I said, i got to get my life back together. So always realize, if you are struggling, there's, other, there's people out there who are willing to help you. Just remember that. Okay, mood changes, like I said. That was me snapping, snapping all the time. So, next slide, please. Social media is your friend. It, it, so, social media is showing, is you, friends, showing those potential warning signs. This is key. You see any of these types of things on posting about seeking revenge, posting about being a burden to others? If you see these things, say something immediately, okay? That means somebody's crying for help. Make sure that you're there and you are that protective factor out there. Next slide, please. 
Okay, as we said, and I know I skip ahead when I talk about these slides here, but connect your friend to a confidential guard resource. Behavioral health. I don't know, everyone here know who Major Troy Townsend is? Absolutely. And he has a sidekick named Lucas Rowley. That they're located in the Army, first floor, med debt area. So, and it's all confidential. If you just need someone just to unload and talk to, that's a resource. I'm a resource. We're all resources out here. So, military crisis line. And I have all these at the end of this slide presentation, so you're going to take a picture of all this, so you have all this information. And like I said, the chaplain, great resource. So, next slide, please. Okay, so we come to the ask portion of it. As you can clearly see here, there's different, different levels. And this is just getting to know your soldiers and knowing each other out there. Just the little things, you know, asking them, how's your family? You know, if you, you know, and you're going to tell when your buddy's off a little bit. You know, a little down in the dump, a little change. You know, just by the little simple things. And I encourage each of you leaders out there, you know, whether we know as you go up in rank, your responsibilities go up and the time that you can spend with every soldier out there is limited. Because you're dealing with everything from Article 15s to height weight to UCMJ actions, things like that. But I encourage each and every one of you at least take a few minutes to socialize with your soldiers. Get to know them. Know their birth dates. You squad leaders and team leaders out there, you should know your when your soldier's birthday is, if they're having an anniversary, if there's something's going on in their life, something significant. So take that time and effort and learn and know your soldiers. And when you ask those things like, hey, how are you doing? You're gonna know when something's a little off there. And you can see in level two, you seem off. Your game, down working, you know, you, you can ask that any different way. I was up in Fairbanks and the guy, he threw out, he, the way he said it was a little different, you know, using, all kinds of profanity, but I said, okay, that's a method. If you can do that with your friends, that's fine. You can do that. But the bottom line is you need to ask them, you know, and what can I do to help? Like in the last presentation, we're a team here, you know, and sometimes you can't do it all alone. You need help. You need somebody to talk to. So make sure, you, like I said, I go back to that. Make sure you are that person that is receptive, talking to people, and you know your soldiers. It's the little things you do in life. And that goes a long way, too. I can tell you right now, uh, when my father passed away one time, I got a card from a soldier. I didn't even know who the soldier was. It wasn't even in my same unit. Soldiers just walked up and gave me a card and said, hey, I heard your father passed away. You know, the impact that had on me, I went, geez, somebody cares. You know, somebody actually cares. So it's the little things you do like that, you know? And I'll tell you right now, that goes a long way. So now you get to level four. Are you thinking about killing yourself? Why would, why would you have to ask that question directly? What's that? To get a direct answer. This way it's not ambiguous. This way, you know, you know exactly. You also may want to ask, do you have a plan? Because this way, if they have weapons in the house, it could be uh, narcotics, you can get that stuff away from them. You want to get away. Also, it could be because at that point, they may have an epiphany. Just them saying that alone, saying, well, oh my God, I actually was thinking of killing myself. It may stimulate them to go, oh my God, I can't believe I'm at this level. So. By asking that question, it's a very hard question to ask. Who here has been through assist training? Anyone? Okay. Well, you guys are going to sign up for it when you get. Oh, you know, you guys have. Okay. You go through a role playing exercise, and even in the role playing exercise, when you have to ask that question, it's very hard to ask that question. Uh, I know for me it was. I ended up subsequently having to ask that question to somebody. So. Uh, but you have to ask that question. Like I said, it could be thought perverted. That could be the turning point in someone's life going, oh my God, I can't believe I'm at this point. So make sure you ask that question. And it's very important with the plan too as well because you want to take any type of weapon out of the house, how we can get you in a safe place and develop that safe plan for you. Next slide, please. Okay. How do you care? You know, 
There's so many different ways you can show you care, so many different ways, especially team leaders, squad leaders. You know, you want to make sure that you are constantly communicating with your soldiers. You guys are getting ready to go on mobe, and I don't mean just at the end of each drill, we'll go, okay, fall out, next drill's, you know, after, next drill's 7, 8 May, fall out. You want to make sure in between drills you are keeping in touch. Now, I don't mean every day calling them up and everything, but at least set some time aside so that you know what's going on. Because nine times out of ten, something's not going to happen at drill. It's going to happen in between drills. So if you're keeping that communication flow going and showing you care, it goes a long, long way. I always want to emphasize that. So, and you want to actively listen. Listen, if somebody is sitting there talking to you and trying to tell you, what's going on in their life. What would active listening be? What's that, sir? Being attentive. Would texting on your phone while listening to somebody, would that be active listening? Negative, negative. Put the phone away, put the stuff away, take the time because you don't wanna ever minimize their problem. Because to you, it may not seem like a huge issue, but to them, each and every one's different. That could be, it could be a major issue in, in their life. So take that time and make sure you're doing that. And you will always want to emphasize you're not alone. I'm here for you. I care. It's a team effort. Like I said, team effort, one family, one fight. Whoa. Whoa. There you go. So make sure you always want to emphasize you're not alone. We got your back. We're always there for you. As you can even see that, I got your back to get you through this. You know, it, it goes a long way. Next slide, please. Escort. Okay. Why would you not want to leave your buddy alone? If they were to say, it, say that they were thinking about suicide. Come on, someone else out there. I keep looking at Bryce over here. Come on. Kill himself? What's up? They could. Leave himself alone, he'll do it. They could have second thoughts, embarrassment. They could end up walking away and going, okay, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. And they can go off. And, and Plus, does that really show you care? No, not at all. Not at all. Okay, hey, bud. See you later. Uh, I got you here. So you want to stick with them. You want to make sure. You want to make sure that you escort them to the appropriate person or a person they feel comfortable. Some people may feel comfortable going to a chaplain versus going to behavioral health. So you wanna make sure that you are working with that person to get them to the care or to the person. Some people may feel more comfortable talking to me. Some people may feel more comfortable talking to anybody else. But make sure that you do and you escort and do not leave them. And you know, you, know, you wanna, if, if it's an immediate threat, if they're on the phone, what would you do? Probably call 911. If if you have somebody else there, have somebody call 911. If it's an immediate threat, that probably be a good thing. But never leave them alone, and always make sure that you take them there. Because once again, it goes back to the ask, care, and escort. Cool. Oh. Next slide. Stigma. What's a stigma? Oh wow, you're reading that slide good. Look at you. <laughs> There's so many stigmas in this world out there. There's stigmas, uh, guys don't cry in movies. There's all different stigmas out there. You wanna eliminate that stigma. You know, I can tell you right now, I shed tears in a movie. And I said this before, uh, anyone who's been in my class before, you want me, I, you were in the class. When Han Solo got chopped down in Star Wars, I actually was like, oh my God. Jeez, oh, I didn't cry, cry, but I was like, oh man, I love that character, him, him and Chewie. So there's stigmas in the world. You want to eliminate the stigma of seeking behavioral health as a weakness. Because I'll tell you right now, that is not true at all. It is not a weakness whatsoever. It is a, tr a huge strength to come forward and admit, like I said, I was prideful. Holy crap, I was way prideful. And just getting help and talking to somebody, you know, it's a huge strength that I highly encourage everyone. If you ever are struggling, you know, you want to eliminate that stigma about seeking behavioral health is a problem. 
you know, and, and always encourage, as you can see here, getting help for yourself is a sign of strength. It's a huge amount of strength and encourage that within the unit. So this way it isn't, oh, when I look at him, he's going all sick. Oh, no, if someone needs help, get them there. Make sure you tell them, hey, thanks for coming forward. It takes a lot of, lot of strength to admit, hey, I'm struggling. I got something going on in life. Just like I said, we all struggle in life. So encourage that. And as you can see here, don't tolerate bullying or embarrassing people, you know. And also do a self self assessment on yourself. I can tell you this right now. Uh, I was always busy taking care of all you papas out there. I never thought about myself at all. I was always okay. I got this guy. I got that. I got this. I got that. It's what became. I was going through stuff. So it's like, oh my god. So make sure you, as leaders out there too, as well, are taking the time and doing some self care. So don't just be, okay, you know, and you guys on deployment, use your time wisely. Go to the gym. This is a great opportunity for you guys. Enroll in college classes. Do something productive other than sitting around dwelling on the fact that, oh my God, I'm separated from my girlfriend, my boyfriend, my family. Do positive things while you're there. Enroll in a class, like I said. You know, it goes along and takes your mind off of everything Plus, you're, you're learning something, and it's going to help you guys get promoted out there. And also, physical fitness. Physical fitness is a great way to relieve stress. So, and maintain a climate of trust and respect. Make sure that you are welcoming of new soldiers. Don't ostracize new soldiers when they come to your unit. Like, oh, he's just a new guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, you know. And embrace them. Make sure that you're talking to them, encouraging them, and they can, you know, it's a welcoming environment and shows that you actually care. Next slide. Okay, here are some, just some of the uh, points of contact and phone numbers that you have here. I don't think you need to worry about the uh, overseas ones in Europe, but these are just some of them. If you want to take your phone out, and take a picture of them, that's fine, but at the air, at the very end, I have two slides that I highly encourage you, all whip out your phones and take it and have it readily available. So, next slide, please. Okay, this, this concludes the ACE portion of it, but I also like to tap on resiliency, because resiliency is the true key to um, suicide prevention. Now, I'm not gonna overstep, I know you're getting a resiliency class later on, but next slide, please. Okay, and if you want more, I'm located up in Echo 206, up in the Armory. Feel free, stop by. Even if it's just a walk by and just say, hey, Mr. Rowan, how you doing? I love talking to soldiers, I truly do. And I love helping soldiers. And trust me, I've been around a long time. Even if it's a question that has nothing to do with suicide prevention, resiliency, substance abuse or anything, I've been in a while. If I don't know it, I'll figure out how to get you to the right person who does know where to go. So feel free, Echo 206, stop by, even if it's just to say a hua. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> okay, what is resiliency? Okay, if someone tell me what resiliency is, come on. It's right there up on the board, oh my God. Jesus, okay. <laughs> As you can see here, you know, it's the ability, you know, to bounce back, you know, in life. You know, we're all dealt, sometimes we're dealt good hands, sometimes we're dealt bad hands. Maybe it's the resiliency to, you know, how did Rocky say it? And I'll throw in the Rocky analogy. I know people, you know, it's not how hard you can hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's, a, that's what winning is done. That's, you know, that's resilient. So, you know, Bad things happen in your life, you want to be resilient, get through it, push through it, and move on. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, here's some things that could cause bad things. That look at, if you can see here, this is from The Apprentice. It's a, you're fired. These are disruptive changes in life that affect people. And, and, and they're, I'll tell you, you know, you don't have a job, you're going through a divorce, you got relationship issues. This person up here, he looks like he's injured, he can't go to work. Uh, I've been here before with no money in my pockets. So these are just disruptive changes in life that can cause people to spiral and their life spiral out of control. So next slide, please. 
these are just some sayings out there for, you know, positive sayings that everyone out there, you know, encouraging positive ch changes out there. Just do it. Be all that you can be. You can do anything you put your mind to. Anyone have another saying out there they want to say? Fake it till you make it. What's that? What was that? <laughs> but the thing is, though, these are these are all positive changes, you know. You know, you want to encourage soldiers. You know, you want to make sure that you're stressing the positive in their life, and you want to say, you know, hey, you can do this. We got this. There's so many different ways you can encourage people. So encourage each other, especially on this deployment. Next slide, please. Ah, resilient role models. You know. You have some fictional and you have some non-fictional. Martin Luther King, Mahatma Gandhi, you know, Christopher Reeve. I mean, these are some resilient people. They went through a lot in the, in the struggles they had to go through and the fights they had to fight. So, but they came through in the end. And as you can see here, you know, Superman, resilient. You know, he even battled death and then came back, even though it's a fictional character. But these are people out there, you know, role models, people to look at and go, man, if they could do it, I can do it. Next slide, please. No? Next slide, please. <laughs> yeah. And you want to make sure, are you a good role model of provider resiliency? That's what you want to do. You, you want to make sure that you, you are that encouraging leader, encouraging soldier, People struggling in PT, you want to be that person, hey, you can do this, you got it, you got it, you got it. And then if they're struggling, we'll get through this. Let's call somebody. You have financial problems? Let's call somebody, you know? So there's always light at the end of the tunnel, and no matter what situation, you just got to find that. And, and you be that person who can guide and be that shoulder they can talk to. Next slide, please. Building resiliency through self-care, okay? Go next slide, please. Physical. Uh, this is great. The, uh, you always want to make sure, especially while you guys are on deployment, that you are maintaining some type of physical readiness, whether it be doing organized PT or unorganized PT, but keeping your body healthy. You know, and you want to make sure you're exercising and you're getting enough sleep because that preys on your mind because it goes by mind, body, and spirit. So make sure that you guys out there while you are on deployment are exercising, doing something, you know, keeping physical fitness a priority in your life. Next slide, please. Mental, relaxing techniques. If you're stressed, sometimes it's good just to take a step back and breathe. You know, I know I've had to do that where I'm just like, oh my God, I got all this stuff going on here. Let me just take a minute, breathe. Some people can do yoga, listening to music, soothing music rock and roll, whatever they want to listen to. So, and also having a hobby. It takes your mind off pressures going on out there. Some people like woodworking, some people arts and crafts. Find something out there, an outlet that is constructive. And I don't mean that an outlet like I go to the bar and drink. So that's not an outlet. Yeah. So, and make plans and goals. You guys on deployment, you're gonna be having a lot of money when you come back. Set a goal, set a plan that you can use that money, uh, you know, in whether it be the uh, down payment on a house, something productive. So make sure you guys are using your time wisely, researching, talking to other people. There's plenty of, of a wealth of leadership out there who's been on several, several deployments out there. So you don't want to come back and blow all your money on a brand new $50,000 vehicle, you know. Use it wisely and, and set a goal. Set you know, do something you know, positive. And like I said, in theater, sign up for a class. You can come back. You have so many college credits. You'll be like, oh my God, I used my time wisely. Next. And emotional. Okay. Some people find solace or some type of writing in a journal. Uh, I've never be personally. That hasn't been for me. But. Uh, some people can do that. It gets their thoughts out. It gets that release. It gets them to talk about things in a journal. That's a great way to do it. Mine, you know, mine would be more 
alone, but doing something productive other than what I used to do was drinking and watching movies, doing something, reading a book, reading a good book. So take that time. These are just, you know, like I said, it's mind, body, and spirit. So these are just good things to, for you to keep in mind while you're on deployment. Next slide. And social, increase activities with family and friends. You know, if you're going through something, sometimes your family is the best person to talk to. Some a good friend, like I said with me, good friend. It was good, you know, sports. Like I said, get out there, go do something. Don't just vegetate and sit there and dwell on, oh my God, how am I gonna do all this? Go out, do something, go hiking, do something. So, and like I said, this goes back to either church, find a way to become involved in community programs. There's so many programs out there, volunteering, Meals on Wheels, going just to help out, you know, at the senior center, you know, and, and, and the smile it puts on their face makes you feel good too. I know for me, me helping somebody, it makes me feel good. So just think about these types of things while you're going through this. Next one. Spiritual, like I said, prayer, church, pastors, there are resources out there to talk to, you know. And there's also little small groups in the church that you can go to, whether it be singles, married, whatever. So find whatever your niche is and find it and do it. Whoa. Whoa. Next one. Major. Next one. These are resources I highly encourage right now. And you've seen these posted. You'll see this slide and the next slide. Uh, they're posted all over the armory. If you don't take a picture today, with your phone, make sure you're in the armory, you take a picture while you're in there. These are good resources to have. If you're going on deployment, you'll have it readily available. Make sure you give it to your spouse. Make sure you give it to your significant other, your mother, father. So while you're on deployment, you have these numbers here. You'll have this one, and go to the next slide, please. And this one right here. They're posted all over the armory. Take pictures of them. It has great resources on there. Everything from family readiness to the IG to my office to substance abuse, uh, the judge advocate. These are great. It has the care line. Make sure you have that. Pass it on. If you're old school like me, have it in a folder right next to the phone so that if your family or significant other needs to call somebody while you're on deployment, they have it all right there. You don't have to scramble around and go, oh my God, what's the number for this? It's all right there. So make sure you take a picture of it. And if you've got any questions, talk to your first sergeant. Your first sergeant will be able to square your way and he'll get you copies of them. So next slide, please. Well, that concludes my presentation. I, I just want to say thank you again uh, for giving me the opportunity to stand up here. You know, you guys are all heroes. and. You know, I'm proud of each and every one of you, and go forth and do well, and I hope your deployment goes well, and if you ever need somebody to talk to, give us a call. Whoop. Whoop. Okay, thank you.